Never honor abusive parents. Look, in our modern day culture, it's not really only our modern day culture, but because we live in, because we live today, I want to talk about the circumstances today. Okay, I I by no means claim that in previous ages it was any different. Okay, but okay, listen, we have been taught from childhood to give a place of influence in our lives to those who have the ability to harm us, right? And this begins with our parents. We have been taught by our environment through traumas and abuse, we have been formed. We formed this pattern of thinking that just because someone has the ability to harm us, they have a right to have impact in our lives and to determine our value. See? Let me give an example. Hitting children. Alright? No parent has the right to hit their child. You see? I don't care if you call it discipline. I don't care if you call it... Um, how do I say it? A corrective hit. It's still abuse. It's still you lashing out against another weaker human being because you don't have your way. You see? And the child... Children are intelligent. The child understands this is abuse. This is wrong. Yet... Because the child is not capable of analyzing reality, they are intelligent to understand that, that, that it's wrong, it's out of order, but they cannot process it co correctly. So the child will assume it's their fault that the parent lashed out. And it doesn't matter if the child really did something wrong or not. For example, let's say a man sexually molests a, ch a child. The child will still assume it's their fault. That's how children are. Okay? So hitting children is never right. You see? You have an adult who can't defend himself and you have a child who's helpless, who can't do anything. Yet, it's very morally correct, so-called, according to the world, for the adult with uh, have with heavy muscles to hit a child whose muscles need aren't even full grown. Does this make sense? You see, no, it doesn't make sense. Yet, generation upon generation, children are brainwashed to tolerate abuse by someone who has the ability to harm them. You see, and and children are being told myths, false histories to justify the abuse. Okay. So think about this. If someone willingly harmed you, and listen, when you are a child, you are at your most vulnerable, you are in your most vulnerable time of your existence. There is no time in your existence that you're more vulnerable as than when you are a child. You are completely dependent upon others. You cannot do anything on your own. You don't have the intelligence and information what's going on, so you have no choice but to trust others. So during this time, faults can harm you for life. Okay? Now listen, if you had someone who willingly, who knew that you were helpless, and they chose willingly to harm you, knowing, knowing that it's wrong and that it will and that it will damage you, but they still did it because to to release, to get a release from it. They just wanted to feel good about themselves. They want to have the feeling as if they are in control and they couldn't have it so they harm you just to feel as if they're in control. Let's say that individual was a school teacher. Let's say you, you've grew up. And now in your life you have some emotional problems due to what that teacher did to you. Would you would you recommend that teacher and invite that teacher in your marriage now and listen to 
what that teacher has to say about you and, and believe it? No, you won't. You would not, because you will remember that teacher or, um, abused me. That teacher did me wrong. I was vulnerable, and he chose to abuse uh, the fact that I was vulnerable. He damaged me for life. It could have gone worse. So he is not someone that I should give any regards to whatsoever. Because he didn't repent of his crime. Neither did he even admit that he was wrong. He even blamed me for what he did. So even your wife and children, or if you're a woman, your husband and your children would tell you, that man is bad news. You see? It's very strange. When it comes to strangers doing something out of order and something harmful to us, we are ready to pick our swords and to fight. We are ready to teach them a lesson. We are ready to have a vengeful lust for justice. But when it's the people around us, close to us, who willingly harm us, we make all kinds of excuses to justify their behavior. No, I'm not really. Let's go deeper. Their behavior is an expression of how they esteem you. So their be all behavior is the. And I'm saying not all behavior, but most behaviors are the expression of how someone thinks inside. Okay, so when you agree with abuse of a relative, relative or someone else close to you, you're basically agreeing with their mindset. And therefore, you're also agreeing with the demons that are behind that mindset. Because, listen carefully, behind every wrong mindset, there are demon spirits protecting that mindset. So, listen. If your parents... Now, listen carefully. If your parents are evil, if they are unrepentant, if they never want to acknowledge that they did anything wrong, if they all are always blaming you, if your parents are manipulating you, using mind games upon you, then ask yourself, why are you giving them honor? Well, most of you would say, well, the Old Testament, the Bible says, honor your father and mother. Okay? First of all, the Old Testament refers to the New Testament. It refers to the Lord Jesus Christ. Okay. So we follow the Lord Jesus Christ. Yes, the Old Testament is written. However, the Old Testament also reveals how human beings were using God's word in a way that it should never be used. So not all examples from the Old Testament should be followed by us. Only if they are in harmony with the words of the Lord Jesus Christ. Okay? Now listen carefully here. Listen, honoring, honor is giving weight to someone, it's giving importance to someone, and also giving influence and power to someone. So when you honor something, you are allowing that thing that you honor to have impact upon you. <coughs> now listen, if you were walking down the road, and it would, there would be a field with mines buried underneath them, Let's say that you are warned that there are mines in that field. Would you still walk upon that field of grass? Even if it's a, if it's a shortcut to, to the village, would you still walk upon that field knowingly that there are mines buried there and that anytime you walk, walk, you can be dead or you can be injured for life? Would you still walk upon it? So, when it comes to such stuff, we use our healthy mind. We use logic. We use, we are rational. We decide, wait a minute, there's danger here that I cannot see, I cannot manage, so I'm not going to put myself in danger. I'm leaving this. So why is it that folks have the tendency to 
the excuse, evil parents. And why do grown children keep allowing themselves to be abused over and over again by evil parents and evil relatives? Now, don't, don't get me wrong here. There's, there's nothing wrong with giving honor to parents. Okay? There's nothing wrong with it. And listen, children obey parents because children cannot do anything on their own. Once a child has grown, the child should repent to the Lord Jesus Christ and only obey God. Adults do not obey parents. That's out of order. Okay? And f so, f so think about this. <coughs> parents who want to have a form of power over you, when you're not a child anymore, that's satanic. That's unnatural. Okay? So, look. <coughs> when someone is dangerous, psychopathic, out of their mind, they should not receive a place of influence in your life, nor in the lives of those around you. Okay? And, um, look, about honoring of father and mother, God spoke this to the Hebrew people, to the children of Israel. Moses went onto the mountain for 40 days and 40 nights. God gave him the two tablets. Why? Because the people requested a law, the people requested a religious institution. That's what the Israelites requested. They did not want to trust God's leadership. So, God called Moses onto the mountain, and the children of Israel had to wait on Moses. Moses <coughs> returned after 40 days and 40 nights, and he found out that the people have, had built golden calves and began to practice pagan rituals. And all <coughs> the ten commandments that God had written were already broken before the people had a chance to even see what they were. So basically, that was to reveal the Hebrew people and the whole of humanity that we should live by grace, by the guidance of the Holy Spirit, not by law, law and not by written procedures. You see? So, honoring your mother and father, it was never meant as a rule to obey. Okay? It was meant to reveal to mankind that we are in trouble, we need Christ. Okay? The only mention of honoring your mother and father in the New Testament is by the Apostle Paul to Christian families. God honoring families where they love the Lord Jesus Christ and they honor God the Father. In such families where the parents are devoted to the Lord Jesus Christ and honor the Father, where they walk by the Spirit there, children are commanded to honor your parents that you may have a long life. Why? Because the parents are blessed. And if the child listens, if the child receives the blessing of the parents, that blessing will impact and benefit the life of the child. So, honoring parents is only valid and only to be done in a safe environment, in a safe, healthy environment, in a safe relationship. <coughs> so, the moment the parents don't follow God, the moment the parents are out of order, the moment the parents are resentful and vengeful, the moment the parents are in darkness, it's not healthy for the child to honor their parents. Now listen. When a child, a child doesn't know any better, right? Because the child <coughs> can't do anything on their own. So the child, as long as the child lives with the parents, it's practical that the child obeys the parents. When they have to go to sleep, when they have to eat. So that's are also natural things. Okay? I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about, give, about giving the parent a place of influence in the child's mind. You see? And listen, ad adults honor God. Okay? That's what adults ought to do. And if the parents are honoring God too, the parents may, have, may also receive some honor because they are also following God. So, honor to parents is not unconditional. Look, 
this on um, this satanic teaching of giving praise and giving good <coughs> and giving um unmerited value to abusers it's not from god because listen think about this if you are constant to protect and uh, preserve those that harm you what does it say about you and if you are accustomed to protect abusers you will become an abuser yourself and not only that you will condone the abuse of others so you are participating in the king in the power of darkness once you do this you are becoming a satanic agent a tool for demon spirits to do their biting on earth that's what you're becoming look children are dependent upon their parents so they listen to them okay that's practical okay so i'm not saying that children should not obey parents when they are dependent upon their parents you see if the parents are godly they love the lord and they are healthy to be around okay then the child should give them a lot of space in a child's life but once a child has grown up and the child realizes my parents are evil the child if the child is still somewhere dependent upon the parent they should listen to the parent for practical reasons but they should not honor them you see if a father sexually molested molested his son let's say the son is now 15 years old has no money to move out of the house okay the the teenager the boy sh- the the guy should listen to the father because if he doesn't something may happen to him or for practical le- reasons he should consider his father but that teenager that has been sexually molested, molested by his father should not honor that father because to honor that father would mean that he would agree with the sexual molestation that has has happened to them and if the mother was aware of what happened and she condoned it just to preserve her marriage that guy should not honor his mother either because she agreed with evil upon him so yes children should obey the parents for practical reasons but but honoring parents is conditional and that's in the word that's in the bible but do many churches teach this no they don't Your churches teach unconditional credit to parents and they also extend this this to governments unconditional allegiance to governments unconditional allegiance to power structures that's not biblical people and you know i meet pagans a lot you see because where i live at the moment there are many pagans and there are many pagans from other countries all around the world that come to the netherlands because the netherlands is a very pagan country okay freemasons rosicrucians um wiccans witches warlocks um magicians of this kind of people love the netherlands okay but anyway i encounter i've encountered many pagans and i still do encounter pagans you see i've noticed the following many of those pagans i'm not saying all but many of those pagans are more real are more realistic than a lot of christians you see i'm not honoring pagans here okay listen i'm not doing that i'm not approving paganism what i do n- notice is that many of those pagans are more in tune with reality when it comes to avoiding danger now listen carefully paganism is dangerous so i'm not talking about their allegiance to falsehood okay <clears throat> but when it comes to human relationships the pagans tends at least the pagans that are serious 
tend to be more watchful and more reasonable than many Christians. Why? Because if you treat a pagan dirty, you see, and you make clear that you're not willingly to change, and that you keep or keep on that you keep on doing it, and that they have just have to find a way to deal with it. There are pagans that will accept it. If there's a religion, if there's a religious explanation for it, of course. But there are many pagans that will flat out make clear to you: listen, either you treat me with honor, or else you will not receive honor from me, or else this relationship is over. You see, paganism is based upon performance. So if someone performs bad. Then someone is excluded. Now, Christians uh, are taught by the Lord Jesus Christ to walk by faith. We ought to love others unconditionally. But loving someone unconditionally does not mean being engaged unconditionally with someone. Love unconditionally, so also loving your enemies, is an attitude of you trusting God for your well-being that you are not going to look for emotional and mental payment with others. <coughs> you see? Does this mean now that you have to allow everyone to be engaged with you? No. And that's what I'm trying to that's what I'm trying to say here. Many Christians have a flawed and very strange cons- idea. Very strange ideas about unconditional love, about following Jesus. See, and listen, I'm not promoting pagans here, okay? What I'm showing is that even though paganism is wrong, is is attached to the demonic realm, at least pagans recognize evil behavior of people very early. And they expel and take measures against such people. You see? And those people are in darkness, yet they recognize evil behavior. And once they are aware of evil behavior, they take actions against it. Now, this is not, this is not about, this is not, this does not concern all pagans. Let me be clear about that. And what I'm just saying about Christians also it does not apply to all Christians. However, I will not deny the tendency that I see among Christian communities to condone evildoers. Look, I'm not promoting the ways of the heathen, that we have to take revenge and retaliate against evildoers. I'm not saying that we have to harm nor hurt evildoers, no. We should, as Christians, be firm in love. We are loving, and love is firm. By being clear, we don't allow evil. We don't allow abuse. If you do not want to treat me in a healthy manner, if you do not want to change the way you think about me, then you will not have a part of my life, period. You see? That's how it should be. You (coughs) ought to be safe in the relationships that you're engaged in. If there's no safety, you have no... You shouldn't be in those relationships. Okay? And the reason why I talk about not honoring abusive parents is because... For some reason, just because a woman gave birth to a child, Christians tend to credit her with a divine, unconditional right upon rights to have impact upon that life of that human being that you gave birth to. Despite how she treats the, 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 that, that life that she gave birth to. And there's also this feministic tendency among many, among many Christian communities today that women are always right, that women can never do wrong. And if things go wrong, it's always the fault of the husband, the fault of the boyfriend, or the fault of any man in her life. People, we need to stop doing this. And it's not only with abusive parents. With everyone that's abusive. With police officers that are abusive, with school teachers, with other relatives, anyone that chooses to have a negative view about you and who are cherishing it should disappear from your life. If they do not want to be responsible, then they have to abdicate from their place of influence. 
in your existence. You see? Look, just because you grew up in someone's house does not mean that just because you were in their house they have a right to um, molest you. That they have a right to scream against you. They have a right to do whatever they want with you because it's their house. Uh, no, that's not true. Abuse is abuse. Whether it happens on someone in, on someone's property or on public ground, it's still abuse. Folks, I'm going to repeat this last time, okay? It is especially for you, <coughs> Christians, those that are born again, those that are part of God's family. God is your father, okay? Your home is the kingdom of heaven. You're not a part of this world system. God placed you on earth. Because remember, there's a big difference between the earth and the world. The earth is, you know, the creation, uh, soil, land, seas, mountains, and all the resources on earth. And the atmosphere, all of that is the earth. The world uh, is the imaginary system that unbelievers hold on to. That includes politics, economics, religion and all of that you are not part of this world so do not follow the patterns of this world okay you belong to the kingdom of heaven so that imp that implies that you follow what god says because the father is the creator of the earth so the earth belongs to the father and the lord jesus christ is the lord of the kingdom of heaven the Lord Jesus Christ is Lord of heaven and earth. <coughs> so you're on earth. So you follow God. And God makes clear. If someone is unrepentant. They refuse to give up their evil towards you. Then you should cut them off. Shake the dust off your feet and move on. Nowhere in scripture do you find any example where the most high condoned evil behavior <coughs> if the lord required you to hold on it was only because of something that the lord was doing through your life for example hagar hagar was a female slave of sarah the wife of abraham <coughs> it wasn't god's will for them to have slaves anyway but sarah had this idea abraham sleep with my uh, maid servant so she can have a child because that's how we you can help God fulfill God's promise. God never, never commanded that, and Abraham was so stupid to grieve into it. So after, so when Hagar was pregnant, Sarah felt offended and began to ill treat Hagar. Sarah was despisable in her behavior. So if she became despisable in the eyes of Hagar. It was her own doing. <coughs> Not that I'm excusing Hagar, but anyway, Hagar became, was a pregnant woman and she was being abused. Okay? So also the child in her womb was in danger, so she fled. Because it was a dumb move to fled because she had nowhere to go, so, the Holy, so God met her in the desert, told her to go back, so in order to give birth, birth to the child. God did not say to her, go back and... and endure abuse because it's right god never condones molestation of anyone well that being said to all i'm going to end this uh, podcast and may the grace of the lord jesus christ be with you